Governments around the world have committed to the promotion of an economically, socially and environmentally sustainable future for our planet, for present and future generations. An important milestone in this process was the Rio Plus 20 conference in 2012, which brought together delegations from all 193 member states of the United Nations. The outcome document of the conference highlighted that green economy is one of the important tools available for achieving sustainable development. So PAGE is a response from the call at Rio Plus 20 for countries who are interested in putting uh, environmental sustainability into the very center of economic policy. And in order to support those countries, PAGE has formed around five UN agencies, including UNDP, ILO, uh, UNEP, UNITAR and UNIDO. The partnership is supporting the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals, in particular Goal 8, which calls for sustained, inclusive and sustainable economic growth, full and productive employment and decent work for all. PAGE responds to the situation of many governments that in principle are committed to sustainable development, but that are not fully clear about what implementing a green economy would mean in practice in their specific national context. Governments want to know in particular what will be the benefits and impacts of green economy reforms on pressing challenges such as poverty, unemployment and food insecurity. PAGE therefore proposes customised assessments to support interested governments in taking informed policy decisions. The assessments allow one, identifying economic sectors that have the greatest potential to become greener, two, analysing concrete policy options such as fiscal reforms or sustainable procurement, and three, identifying the finance and investment needs for achieving relevant policy targets. You see, this assessment showed us that uh, sectors like agriculture, sectors like energy, manufacturing and transport, if we manage these sectors properly in a green economy, low carbon development pathway, then Kenya stands to have an economic growth of over 6 to 19 percent compared to our business as usual, or what we can call the brown economy. And it also showed that actually our uh, greenhouse gas emission can be down 15% compared to if we just go in the business as usual manner. Now with this knowledge of the sectors with the best abatement potential on greenhouse gases and the sectors with the highest potential impact on positive change on our growth, we were able to uh, target these specific sectors with policies that are enabling us to move and grow in a, in a clean way. Hay varios actores. Eh, en el gobierno, por ejemplo, está el Ministerio de Trabajo y Promoción del Empleo, está el Ministerio de la Producción, está el Ministerio de Economía y Finanzas, está el CEPLAN. Es decir, hay varios este, ministerios del sector ejecutivo que están participando de este proceso ¿no? en diferentes niveles. Igualmente también están participando los gremios empresariales a los cuales les comunicamos de qué se trata toda esta iniciativa y también contamos con el apoyo de la sociedad civil. ¿no? Este, y nosotros como Ministerio del Ambiente que lideramos este proceso. PAGE can support your country in conducting three different types of assessments, depending on your needs. One, a green economy assessment, also called macroeconomic assessment. Two, a green jobs assessment. And three, a green industry assessment. Green economy assessment is it's not a rocket science. <laughs> it is common sense. We work with uh, our national counterparts to do several things. One is to uh, consolidate or establish their own goals and targets for sustainable development. The second thing we work with them to do together is to look at existing policies, existing investment plans, and assess how these existing 
financial flows and the, and the policies contribute or otherwise uh, to the uh, goals and targets. The third thing we do with them is to look at what are the changes that are necessary in order to better achieve those goals and targets. In Mongolia, for example, the United Nations Development Programme has been supporting the government for many years in national development planning through macroeconomic assessments and modelling. Through PAGE, the green economy dimension of the model has been strengthened. What has also done this work on PAGE has also enabled us to dig much deeper into the sectors that have to do with green economy. So we can now look at, as I can give an example perhaps, we can now look at issues like when Mongolia is uh, looking to shift away from coal as its energy source to more renewable energy. The, the tool, the, the, the model, can now help provide the material to decision makers in Mongolia to say what is the likely cost of this transition, what is the impact on poverty, what is the impact on GDP, uh, what is the impact of energy costs, uh, if you go about this shift in a gradual manner, if you go about this shift in a more rapid manner, so it can give you much more nuanced applications for decision making. The work we have done in the ILO gives us uh, indication that transitioning to green economies uh, can offer uh, major opportunities for employment creation. We can have net job gains, that's what we see from most of the studies, in the range of 1.5 to 2%. However, these job uh, benefits are not uh, by default. They have to be by design, with policies geared towards employment creation. Now, it's important for policymakers to be able uh, to measure, or for someone to measure for them, the potential benefits uh, for employment of different investment and policy reforms and scenarios. So we can do that ex ante in a way that you give a sense of what could be the important benefits of these different policy and investment options, or ex post uh, to allow policymakers to see what have been the employment um, gains of the policies they have implemented. The green jobs assessment in Mexico, for example, reveals that there is a potential increase of 730,000 jobs in agriculture, electric energy, construction, the manufacturing industry and the housing sector. This would represent a 2% increase in total employment. So the Green Industry Assessment looks at the policy environment, identifies who are the key stakeholders, who are the main actors, what policies are in place, what legislation is there to support the private sector and the manufacturing industry. But it also looks at the key um, economic sectors or the key manufacturing subsectors and looks at greening potential in those sectors and then sees whether there are areas, activities around those sectors that could be built up into new green industries. For example, we look at establishment of eco-industrial parks where the waste of one firm is used as an input to another. These three types of assessments complement each other and can be used as a package. The Green Economy Assessment provides a broad study of the macroeconomic long-term impacts of green policies on priority sectors such as agriculture, energy, water and manufacturing. The Green Jobs Assessment provides additional data by analysing the potential for job creation in each sector in the short to medium term. The Green Industry Assessment can complement these studies by providing a detailed analysis of how selected industries can be supported to adopt more sustainable patterns of production. Every assessment can be done on its own and provide results that are meaningful to policymaking. However, as a package, they allow countries to combine the power of long-term scenarios encompassing the whole economy, society and environment 
with analysis of short-term impacts on jobs or certain industries. Page offers a strong uh, learning and capacity development component as part uh, of its offer in, in, in its partner countries. We are working at two levels. First, we're working with decision makers um, to facilitate an understanding of what are the benefits of modeling and policy assessment and how can the results be integrated uh, in both national and sectoral decision making. It is really ultimately policymakers who will use the results of the modeling um, and therefore um, helping them and working with them to design the policy questions up front and the targets is of key importance. The second level is a bit more technical. We are working with technical teams from different ministries to get a good understanding of the, the models themselves, uh, to develop capacity to expand the models to meet the needs of decision makers, and to create policy uh, scenarios um, that ultimately can inform policy making. In Mongolia, PAGE trained decision makers and technical staff from planning, finance and environmental ministries through advanced skills development courses in the country and abroad. As a result, capacity is put in place to model green indicators included in Mongolia's green development policy through local institutions. So the green economy assessments that are done under PAGE uh, enable policymakers to visualize the future, to look 10 or 20 years down the road and see what might be the impact of a policy decision taken today, whether it's in the domain of employment, generating new jobs, or investing in certain parts of the economy, like their industrial policy, for example. It enables a country to look at their environmental footprint going forward into the years, and also the shape of their economy, and how it can generate wealth. Um, in that respect, it's a very powerful tool to imagine what the future may look like as a result of decisions taken today.